Hi, and uh, thank you for having me here, and uh, thank you for staying this late today. I, I would like to present a patient that was treated in our department, a 60-year-old male, a retired engineer, married with two children. His past medical history is relevant for 100 pack years of smoking, uh, COPD, hypertension, cardiac arrhythmias with APBs and VPBs treated with a beta blocker. An echo from 2009 shows a good global systolic function with a small area of inferior basal akinesia. Myocardial perfusion imaging showed suspected minor inferior ischemia with a left, uh, left ventricular ejection fraction of 54% and no family history of cancer. He was hospitalized in April of 2014 due to a large bowel obstruction, as you can see here in these images, and he was treated conservatively. He underwent colonoscopy that showed an obstructing tumor of the splenic flexure, which was a moderately to poorly differentiated adenocarcinoma. He underwent imaging studies, including a PET-CT. As you can see here, a, the PET-CT shows a colonic tumor in the splenic flexure with FDG uptake and liver metastasis in segments 4B, 6, and 7, and as you can see in the lower images. He was diagnosed with stage 4 colon cancer with liver metastasis, potentially resectable, and started neoadjuvant treatment with Folfox and Bevacizumab. You can see here the chemotherapy regimen, the Folfox, which includes 5-FU, leucovorin, oxaliplatin, and continuous infusion of 5-FU and the bevacizumab, which is an anti-VGF. He received treatment every two weeks, starting May 2014. With a poor tolerance to treatment, he suffered from uh, nausea and vomiting, anorexia, and 10 kilo weight loss. In uh, September, this was after six courses of chemotherapy and five days after the last course of chemotherapy, he suffered from an acute respiratory distress and hypothermia without chest pain. ECG showed a new onset LVBB and an anterior wall ST elevation. He was mechanically ventilated and started treatment with a working diagnosis of sepsis. That night, he suffered from two episodes of ventricular fibrillation, successfully treated with a CPR and amiodarone. A new ECG showed anterior wall ST elevation with a resolution of the LVBB. Troponin levels were very high and he was diagnosed with an anter acute anterior wall MI and he underwent an urgent cardiac catheterization. You can see here the prior normal ECG from August on the lower side, and uh, the upper image is the um, a ECG from September with the ST elevation in the anterior wall, as you can see here. In the coronary catheterization, there was a 99% subtotal occlusion of the middle AD with 100% occluded RCA with collaterals. An intra-aortic balloon pump was inserted to maintain blood pressure. An echo showed a new anterior septal akinesia with severe ventricular dysfunction. He underwent a successful angioplasty with a drug eluting stent and was extubated. You can see here the LAD before catheterization and a nice reperfusion afterwards. Uh, at the end of September, he uh, received the full treatment for secondary prevention uh, according to the ESC STEMI guidelines and was discharged without signs of heart failure despite severely reduced LV ejection fraction. He underwent a second PET-CT in October that showed a very good response to treatment. Uh, you can see here the colonic tumor in uh, April and no FDG uptake in October. As well, in the liver metastasis, there's a decreased FDG uptake. You can see here and here. On November, chemotherapy was renewed with a dose reduction and without bevacizumab. He received an additional two cycles of chemotherapy with poor tolerance and severe peripheral neuropathy and was referred to potentially curative surgery. And at this point, I would like to raise questions for discussion for my next presenter. The first question is, should we refer high-risk patients to cardiac assessment before treatment with potentially uh, cardiotoxic agents as, such as 5 or bevacizumab? Zaza talked about it earlier, that he would like everyone to go to a cardiac assessment first. 
Uh, was it safe to continue 5-FU in this patient after a recent M MI? And who should we blame for the MI of this patient? Is it the known risk factors that he had? Is it the 5-FU, maybe the bevacizumab? And would you have done anything differently? I thank you for your time.